sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes students uh, are not happy or they, they feel a bit hard done by. What is your process if a student contacts you? How does that work? Well, it, it often depends on what the nature is of the what might be going yes. wrong. Um, so we, we do have a kind of full staff contingent here to answer any queries and inquiries. So if by any chance it isn't covered in the documentation that we provide, um, we're very happy to guide tutors, particularly in kind of areas that they might be uncertain or sometimes what we think is kind of a sentence in a tutor guide that says this is what should happen in this circumstance might be read in an ambivalent way there. And so we're very happy to clarify and provide guidance where we can. Um, same thing with students. Most often if it's a, we're not too sure what's going on here, or can you clarify this? Um, it might be that we say, have you checked this out with your tutor first? Mm. Because that would be your first port of call. Because, like we say, we, we provide the qualifications, but actually there's a lot of variation in delivery that's entirely expected, mm. different theoretical approaches and things like that. And if somebody were to ring up and ask us, should my tutor be teaching this bit of this theoretical approach on this particular session number? That's not the level of detail that we yes. get into. Yes. Um, but if a candidate comes to us and says, I'm having a real difficulty with my centre, or I think there might be a real kind of cause for complaint here. Mm. Um, like I said, when we approve a centre, we check that they have a very detailed complaints procedure that they will offer to students so that that student actually has a really fair process they can go through to raise concerns, to share their worries with their centre, with their tutor or the centre management, and that there is a staggered process that, that can go through to ensure that, that student is supported to make a complaint if there's an issue. Um, and we, we monitor that, don't we? So if, yeah. if a student... I mean, t what tends to happen is that students contact us in the first instance because mm. something has gone wrong usually usually not always in the relationship with their tutor mm. yes. um, and that's not our remit to kind of sort that out so we would always refer them back to their centre mm. yes. to, to find informal avenues first of all just mm. to talk to the mm. tutor or, or whoever it may be and if that doesn't work to go to the next line of command as it mm. were up in their centre and if that doesn't work then they may have to take out a formal complaint and once they've done that and gone through the formal complaint, they can ask us to look at it to make mm. sure the complaint process has been followed mm. according to the process they gave us when they got mm. approval to run the qualifications. And if they've not followed that properly, um, if something has gone wrong, I mean, say, for example, they've mm. decided to charge the student to go through a complaint, <laughs> which would be a big no-no for yes. us, <laughs> then we you know, would yeah. go back to the centre and say, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, so we, we would monitor it in that way, but we don't actually run the complaint mm. process, if sure. you see mm. what I mean. So I guess the message that I'm hearing is that the centre should deal initially with any mediation Usually, difficulties yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and within their own policies and procedures. And really, if a formal complaint's raised, then that might be something mm. that you look at, yeah. at, at, some, at some point. But the scope really is that the centre initially deals with it through their yes, policies. Yeah, if they can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. If if they want to complain about an external assessment result, they do have a right to appeal. So there is an appeals process, a CPCAB appeals process mm. that students can go through if they want to appeal an external assessment mm. result. But anything else, any other assessment decisions, mm. they those are made by their centre, so they would have to go back through the centre to appeal against an assessment decision that's been given in the centre. I think that's really, really interesting to know because I think that sometimes students don't realise that. They don't realise that centres have their own policies, procedures mm. and, and complaints, yeah. avenues of complaint. Hopefully mm. they don't have to mm. use it. Um, and they, they shouldn't bypass that and come straight straight to you because yeah. it's not your remit at that point. Mm. And I think it gives the, the centre then the ability to really kind of work with that. Yes. Um, they know the candidate themselves, so they're probably going to be in the best place to, to work through any kind of difficulties that are going on. And I think it's important to acknowledge that counselling training um, is very challenging and it can stir up quite a lot of emotion. And I think it's about acknowledging that sometimes those very difficult dynamics just as we would as practitioners, as therapists, we would work with what's in the room and try to kind of resolve that process yes. internally. And 
sometimes that is really, really hard for people, and I get that. I really yes. do understand mm. it. Well, things get triggered, don't mm. they? And Absolutely. And they come out in all sorts of different ways, and um, maybe not always quite in the mm. right place, mm. but that's can be what yes. happens. Yes, and certainly at the higher level qualifications, you know, level four, you know, where people are really looking at themselves, in being intrapsychic yeah. and yeah. feeling yeah. how they feel and the world changes around them, it can be a, yeah. can be quite mm. troubling. And, and I think that's a good point because the Level 4 is our only two-year qualification yes. and a lot can happen to people during two those two years, years of a course. Yes. You know, life happens to all of us and so things occur during those two years which might have quite an effect on how students cope yes. with demands of mm. a rigorous training and placement and supervision and personal therapy. It can all play a part. And of course, people see the world differently. They, mm. they come in and... Mm. You know, it's it's a little bit like the Matrix to some extent. Yes. People <laughs> people see the reality of the lives mm. that perhaps they've they've been denying or not just not seeing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, and the training is transformative in nature. Yes, it, it kind of. I always used to say to my students for year level four, this will be probably the hardest two years of your life, and it needs to be. Yes. Because at the end of it, you need to be the best practitioner you can be for Absolutely. your clients. Yeah. So expect to go through the mill. To some degree, enjoy going through the mill as much as you yes. can and understand that it, it will be worth it. Yes, yes. I used to say to my students, you know, um, it should come with a health warning. Yeah. Really. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Training. And, you know, the, the idea that councillors are forged... Mm, you know, yeah. they forged in the furnace of personal mm. development and their own personal view of the world. Mm. So I think that's a very strong message that things things might the world will change. Mm. Certainly, mm. as you say, through a two-year course. Yeah. Yeah.